Hello, Chaps Wolfcore here, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Uh, so we're gonna be hopping back into wherever the heck we were in this game. I honestly don't remember. Um, I think we're dating three different guys right now, and I kind of want to go on another date with Brian, the sexy, sexy, red-haired guy that you can see right there in the green. So let's hop back into the game. You've got dads. You've got dads. Awesome. So, uh, we just finished up our date with Damien on viewer request, and it was fine. Uh, he's a perfectly nice chap, but I don't know, he's a bit too, uh... Yeah, he's a bit too something for me. Uh, but Brian, I like Brian a lot. He's just a big old cutie pie of a bear. So we're gonna go on a date with Brian. And uh, we've already read this, so let's message him again. And to just quickly refresh you on what happened on our last date with Brian, we went out to mini golf with the kids. Then we went and had some drinks at a tiki bar. It was quite cheeky if I do recall, and we made plans to go out fishing again, and I boasted my fishing skills despite the fact that I have none. Oh, I have a message from Brian. Hey, Daisy and I are going fishing tomorrow. Are you in or out? Oh no, I've been dreading this day. I accidentally boasted about my abilities as a fisherman to Brian, and now he's challenging me to another dad off. I've been doing my fishing research online, but I'm nowhere close to being an expert. Still though, I have to accept. Hey, uh, I type back to Brian. Sounds great, man. Super excited to catch all those fish. And my lawn could use another good mowing. If you know what I mean. That'll show him. Ryan responds back, letting me know that tomorrow he'll pick us up at an hour I had previously forgotten existed. Man, that's going to be a rough start. Oh, jeez. Amanda! Amanda comes into the room from the kitchen eating a cheese stick by biting it off piece by piece like some kind of monster. Hey, that's the way to eat cheese sticks. It's better. It's faster. It takes too long to peel them apart. I'll let this go. I didn't raise you like that. What? It's called string cheese and not chompy cheese for a reason, Amanda. Did you just call me in here to criticize my controversial string cheese eating technique or what? No, Amanda, we have to go fishing tomorrow. Well, you have to go fishing. I get to play with Brian's dog. Oh, the corgi. How do I become a master of fishing overnight? You went fishing in the Girl Scouts, didn't you? Nope. My stint in the Scouts was brief and purely transactional. Though I could get free cookies, but I didn't know that I had to, like, be outside and tie knots and stuff. But I have to beat Brian. Hmm. Dad, let me tell you a story. Do you remember last summer how I applied for a job at that coffee shop across town? Uh, give me a refresher? During the interview, they asked me if I knew how to work an espresso machine, and I really wanted the job, so I lied and said yes. On that... Yeah, Starbucks flashbacks. Ah, Starbucks flashbacks! Okay, we're good. It was a rough year of my life, boys. Rough year of my life. On that first morning, there was a line out the door, and within half an hour, I severely burned my hand, and they told me to go home and never come back. I still have a scar from that. Of course I remember. What does that have to do with fishing? The burn is a metaphor, Dad. I don't get it. You can lead a horse to water. What do horses have to do with fish and burns? Mm. Dad, please. I didn't I don't get your obsession with competing against Brian. You wouldn't understand. It's a dad thing. Please try explaining it to me. Okay. Brian's just he just thinks that he's so much better than me, and he purposefully reminds me of that whenever he can. It's like he has to one up me. I have to beat him at his own game. Huh? Is that what you think is happening here? No, Amanda. Okay, good. I know what's happening here. All right, pups, we should both be getting some sleep. See you in the morning. Night, Panda. I brush my teeth and throw on some pajamas. I climb into bed, set my alarm, and close my eyes. Okay, sleep. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. I am wide awake. I hate that. I can't help but think about the last time I went fishing, hoping that there's something I can glean from it to give me an edge over Brian. I was about nine years old. My dad woke me up one morning and told me to get dressed and meet him downstairs. It was still dark out. I had no idea what was going on, but before I knew it, we were both alone on a freezing cold lake. I had to sit there for hours while it got hot and muggy, the air thick with bugs. I picked at mosquito bites while my dad sat in stony silence, fishing pole in one hand, a beer in the other. We didn't catch anything. Sounds like a good day. On the long drive home, my father bought me a pack of cigarettes 
and I didn't say a thing. <laughs> wow, that's bleak. It didn't help, and I think I have some repressed sadness about my father. I'll deal with that later. I'm sitting on a boat in the middle of a body of water. I can't see any land, but I know it's a lake. The water is placid and still. I'm holding a fishing pole. I don't understand why, but I feel but it feels like my life depends on catching fish right now. I cast my lure into the water and wait and wait and wait. My whole being is filled with hopelessness as I watch the line disappear into the depths below. You use the wrong lure. I look up and see my father, just as he looked at me that one cold morning, disapproving. I'm panicking now. I pull the lure up and try to grab a different one, but all of the lures in my tackle box are exactly the same. I look up to my father for guidance, but he's gone. I try casting again, but I can't I can't hold my footing. My boat tips over, and I fall into the water, sinking further and further. I see this multitudes of fish that have been lying just below the surface, all swimming around me as if to taunt me. One fish swims up to me. He has Brian's eyes. You gotta use a neutral buoyancy lure if you're trying to catch trout, buddy. Whoa! I jolt awake to the sound of my alarm. It's fishing day! That would explain the weird dream. I groggily slip on clothes and get ready. I spot Amanda's door half open and see her still curled up in a mountain of blankets. Walking over to her bed, I give her a tiny kiss on the forehead. Oh. Fishing day, kiddo. You ready? No. Well, you gotta get up. I can't do this without you. Also, stop sleeping in your clothes. Amanda pulls her comforter over her head. Never. Amanda, I'll get up in a minute. All right, Brian should be here in 20, so better not just go back to sleep. Amanda sticks her hand through the blanket to wave me away. I leave her room and make myself some coffee and another cup with lots of cream and sugar for Amanda whenever she gets up. Amanda eventually wanders in and chugs her coffee while I do word jumbles. I hear the doorbell ring. That must be Brian. Still rubbing our eyes, we walk outside to see Brian. He's decked out in fishing gear. Daisy's falling asleep next to him. <laughs> Early bird gets the worm, buddy. You ready to fish? I was born ready. My eyes narrow in on Brian. It's a good day to die. <laughs> Hop on in, guys. Let's get this fishing party started. I walk over to the driver's side door and open it. Woof, woof. Brian's dog immediately hops into the driver's seat, wagging his tail furiously. Oh, I love the little corgi. Can I see your license, sir? <laughs> Maxwell, let Wolf sit. His name is Maxwell. Aw. Maxwell obediently hops into the back to cuddle up with Daisy. Amanda settles in next to Maxwell and Daisy and immediately falls asleep. You ready for an adventure? I'm ready for glory. I struggle to stay awake as we drive to the outskirts of town. Country music plays quietly from the radio as I watch trees pass by. So where exactly are we headed? It's about an hour north of here, a little spot I've been going to since I was a kid. My dad used to take me there all the time. I don't think anybody else knows about it. I brought everything we need so that we can catch some trout. Have a nice little fire and enjoy the nature. My, uh, my fishing pole is in the shop, getting it tuned up. Do you maybe have an extra I could borrow? But of course, it's probably not as nice as it's as it sounds like yours is, though. Right. I am digging a hole here. <laughs> I stare out at the forest, lining the highway. The sun is just barely over the horizon, scattering dusky pink light through the trees. For a split second, I spot a deer grazing on the side of the road before it leaps back in front of the car and is crushed beneath our tires. Oh, wait, no. Leaps back into the brush. <laughs> Gotcha. After a nice quiet drive, Brian eventually tells me to pull off the highway and onto a dirt road. The car bumps along until we reach a clearing that opens up to the magnificent lake. Well, here we are. I step out of the car and help Brian unload our gear as Maxwell runs around his barking. The kids wake up and wander to the shore where Daisy tries to teach Amanda how to skip rocks. Brian and I carry the tackle boxes and cooler down to the edge of the lake where he has a canoe waiting. A canoe. Ah, oh, great, it's still in one piece. Hold on, help me out with Maxwell. I help Brian place a tiny dog-sized life vest on Maxwell. Woof, woof. Oh. All right, your turn. Brian hands me a lime green life vest. Maybe if I fall in, you'll save me. <laughs> if I fall in, I'm counting on you to rescue me. Suit yourself. Brian turns to Amanda and Daisy, who are still skipping rocks. You kids want to fish? I'm good with just throwing rocks into the water. 
Amanda hurls a rock into the pond with gusto. Yeah, take that, water. Amanda, you're supposed to be skipping them. Whoa. Is that what we're doing? Daisy, don't you want to fish? Mm -hmm. I think catching fish is kind of inhumane. Well, you're gonna go explore the woods and look at bugs and stuff. All right, be safe, don't go too far. Ryan puts the life vest around himself and we throw all of our equipment onto the canoe. Maxwell happily jumps into the, jumps in and takes his place, looking out over the front of the boat. I get into the canoe as Brian shoves off. We paddle together to get ourselves in the middle of the lake. Just the boys. Nice. Most freshwater fish usually feed at dusk and dawn, which is why I had to get you up so early. Yeah, I know. That's pretty common fisherman knowledge, after all. Fisherman knowledge that I am knowledgeable about. Still a gambling man? You know it. Let's see who can catch more fish. You can catch more than one? <laughs> Sounds easy enough to me. What's on the line? What's on the line? Ah. Besides all the fish I'm going to catch, obviously. <laughs> I was thinking something a little more high stakes than mowing the lawn. Ooh, custody of our children? <laughs> more than that, let's say, if I win, I get your weed whacker. The Whackmaster 2000? That's a limited edition. But if you win, you get my pole saw, the reach and cut 3000. Ooh, the cordless version? That's the one. Shit, <laughs> the Reach and Cut 3000 is state of the art. My Weed Whacker is a prized possession, but there are those hard to reach branches at the back of the yard that have been begging for a pruning. You're on. We shake on it. I suddenly remember that I don't know how to fish. My foolish fatherly pride will one day be my undoing. I watch as Brian ties a lure and does some stuff I can't quite follow with his fishing pole. He ca casts it into the lake. Oh boy, now I have to do that. I stare down at the tackle box at the pole in my hand. Uh, 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 insult, no. Stretch before physical activity? Because I'm such a pro fisherman, I anticipate a lot of quick physical movements over the course of this fishing session. To prepare for such activities, I will now stretch my body so that it is limber and ready for battle. Also, to attract a mate. That's very responsible of you. I do a few calf stretches, some bicep pulls, and crack my neck several times. I bend over and try to touch my toes, but I can't make it happen. I can barely get the tips of my fingers past my shins. I know how that feels. All right. My nimble body is now lithe and pliant, perfect for wrangling every trout in this lake with my bare hands. Now what? Uh, uh, per, per, perform fish mating cult? Mm, no, no. Tie a knot or something? Meditate. Mm. I'm going to try and tie a knot or something. I take my pole and try to tie an elaborate looking knot to impress Ryan. The classic hunter's bend. I learned that one in my youth. Yep, this one isn't coming apart anytime soon. With this knot, I will cast my heavenly line upon the unsuspecting water and deliver unto us a bountiful harvest. I look over to Brian. He doesn't seem to be paying attention. Let's cast this sucker. I pull my rod back and launch the lure as hard as I can. I think that was supposed to be as hard as I can. We're going to forgive that one. And the lure flies off of the line and sails far, far away, landing at the lake with a loud sploosh. <laughs> Sorry, I judged the wind speed wrong. This cold air drives the pressure down. Ha! Ah. Huh. Go ahead and take my pole. I know it's hard switching to a new pole you're not used to. I'll fix up another lure. Brian hands me his pole with a smile, and I just sit there feeling like an idiot. <laughs> Time for a mini game. Fishing around here is easy. They group up. All you gotta do is line up three of the same species and reel them in. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, let's go. I need to match three of the same species. Uh, I can't tell which fish is which. Match that fish. Oh, oh okay. how do I do this? Um, do it. Drag, drag. Woo! Here we go. Here we go. All right. Oh, oh slaying it. Um. Catch of the day. Catch of the day. Catch of the day. Oh, I'm gonna get S. This is just too Catch freaking easy. I played Candy Crush. Come at me, bro. Ryan, bro, Ryan. Oh shit. Uh. Uh. How much time? Oh, I have a minute and a half to do this shit. This is easy. Nice, man. There we go. Here we go. Um. Ooh, I like that one. That one's pretty. I want more of those. Uh. Just up.
Come on, one more, one more, one more. No, I'm running out of time. No. Okay, how do we do? S plus rock on, baby. I am a fisherman born and raised. He'll never know. Good work, says Brian. That was actually kind of hard. Wow, this is way tougher than I thought. I look over to Brian, who's smiling and obvious, ob uh, obviously enjoying his time out here on the lake. I will crush him. Suddenly, the fish fishing pull jumps in my hand. I reflexively tuck, tug upwards. I think I got something big. The tip of the pole dips down repeatedly, and the line starts to run. Ah. Reel it in. I finally get the fish right up next to the boat. It's a long, beautiful rainbow trout. Brian hands me a net. It's all yours. I lean down and notice that my hands are shaking with excitement. This fish is bigger than all the ones Brian's caught. That pole saw is mine. All but... Oh no. The entire canoe tips over with me. I find myself sinking into the lake. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. I should have taken the life vest. All of a sudden, I'm embraced under the water and pulled into Brian's arms. Oh my. I'm finally dragged upward, sputtering water. All of our gear floats on the surface. Maxwell doggy paddles around us in circles, having a great time. Okay. You all right? Does that count as one? <laughs> well, seeing as all of our fish are now swimming safely back in the lake, I guess so. Brian laughs. Let's get you to the shore. Brian and I flip the canoe back over and fill it with our now soaking wet gear. We row back to the shore with Maxwell in tow. Once, oh, hi. Once we go get to the beach, Maxwell darts off into the woods. Brian takes off his shirt. Dots of lake water glisten in the sun across his strong back. Man, all that general contracting must have built this guy like an ox. <laughs> I hope he doesn't notice me staring. I'm gonna get a fire going so we can dry off. Wanna hand me yours? I, uh, yes. Okay. I reluctantly take off my own shirt and toss it to Brian. I suddenly wish I had done more sit-ups in my life, or any sit-ups at all, really. Another thing you've bested me in, stupid sexy Brian. You might as well fry that shirt up. Seems like it's the only lunch we'll have. The day's young, we can fish from the shore. Once Brian gets the fire going, I sit and try to dry off my pants. Brian sets a couple lures out by the water's edge. We're probably going to have to put the kibosh on the competition for now until another day my stomach growls I don't know about that. you hungry oh I'm fine Brian reaches into his cargo shorts and pulls out a few granola bars hey. I have a small child I am flushed with snacks Brian joins me by the fire and I accept the cargo short granola and now we're back to waiting where did the girls get off to shouldn't they be back by now hmm. uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much they're a couple of smart kids that's what I'm worried about. They're too smart. They've probably established a small rural government by this point and in <laughs> installed themselves as leaders. I take a look around at the sun cresting the tree line, casting the entire lake in a warm golden glow. The forest seems to be coming alive now. Birds chirp in the distance. Wow, nature is beautiful. Not as beautiful as Brian, but beautiful. A mosquito bites me. I slap my neck and curse. Nature sucks. Here you go, bud. Brian hands me a bottle of bug spray. I begrudgingly take it and douse myself. Ugh, I've always hated how this stuff smells. Really? I've always kind of liked it. Reminds me of being outside. Maybe you and I have different sentiments on the outdoors. Maxwell comes bounding up to me, a huge stick in his mouth. He drops it at my feet and looks at me expectantly. Ooh, throw the stick towards the woods. Fake out a throw. Break the stick in half and assert your dominance. Hell no, throw the stick towards the woods. I hurl the stick as hard as I can towards the tree line. Maxwell bolts after it, running as fast as his stubby little legs can carry him. Which con consequently is not very fast. It is very cute though. Nice throw, Wolf. I turn away so he can't see me blush. Maxwell brings the stick back to me, clearly proud of himself. Good boy, Maxwell. You're a very good and speedy boy. You're the world champ of fetch. It's time for the pets. What's the plan? Uh, butt pats never fail. Scratch me. Oh, you gotta get behind the ears. You gotta get behind the ears. I give Maxwell some nice little scratches behind his floppy ears. He responds in kind by licking my face. He really likes you. Be careful. He's gonna try to follow you home if you keep that up. I scratch Maxwell's ears more intensely. I'm gonna steal your dog, Brian. <laughs> we both laugh, but I'm only kind of kidding. While I'm playing with Maxwell, 
fish begin routinely pulling on Brian's lines. I watch Brian effortlessly, effortlessly, effortlessly fillet the fish, squeezing a bit of lemon on them and frying them up in a cast iron pan. Before we know it, we have a feast fit for a couple of shirtless dudes. Nice. Amanda and Daisy emerge from the woods, looking totally unscathed. Whoa, Dad Bod Patrol, I'm going to have to issue you both a citation and demand you both put your shirts on. There's a child present. Children present. I can read. Brian tosses me my now dry shirt. I pull it over my head, thankful that I will no longer be distracted by Brian and his pecs. <laughs> Where have you guys been? Uh, studying entomology. What? We were playing with bugs. Hmm. I expected you guys to be more covered in, like, mud and stuff. Daisy looks offended. What do you take me for, a child? Yes? Amanda puts a hand on Daisy's shoulder. Dad. Right. We take a seat around the fire, and Brian serves us all a generous piles of fish and Paper, on paper plates. It's absolutely delicious. Why does he have to be good at everything? Fish taste okay? Daisy and Amanda both nod furiously. Mouthfuls of fish. It's incredible. I've never had fish this good. Yeah, it's great. Old Harding family recipe. Hmm. Why aren't... Why are your pants wet? Well, Amanda, we were out there on the lake and oh, then... Shucks. And then I accidentally tipped over the boat. Don't worry. All of the gear flowed to the surface so we didn't lose anything. Right, Wolf? I, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Oh, I can't believe he just covered for me. Gosh, he even out humbles me. He's trying to beat me at everything, including my world famous sense of humility. We finish our fish and end up playing catch with Maxwell for a little while before we decide to head out. After cleaning up the camp, we pack up the station wagon and let Maxwell into the back seat. The poor pup falls asleep in a cuddle puddle with Amanda and Daisy. They've had a long day. Been an ordeal today, bud. Let me drive you guys home. I want to prove that I'm the most awake dad on the block, but yeah, I'm beat. Fine. As we drive away, I take one last look at the lake disappearing behind us and smile. I rest my head against the window and the low rumble of the dirt road beneath us lulls me into a peaceful sleep. Hey, sleepyhead. I opened my eyes and realized that I have dozed off in the car. I self-consciously wipe a bit of drool off my chin. Oh, hey, I was resting my eyes. Uh, just in case we suddenly have to jump into any sort of conflict. So I'm super awake for it. And ready to fight. With my strong arms. It's all good. You earned some rest, buddy. Thanks for coming out with us today. I had a lot of fun with you. Thanks for inviting us. I also had fun, actually. Glad to hear it. Take it easy, yeah? You too. Take it the easiest. Ryan chuckles to himself as he unloads the car. Damn it, I wanted to kiss. Next time. Amanda and I get inside and immediately collapse onto the couch. Long day. Yup. I was so close to that pole saw. Mm. Pole saw? Yeah, Brian and I were competing to see who could catch the most fish and... Ugh, stop! Why do you care so much? Mandy Pandy, just look at the guy. He's so obviously got my number, and he's rubbing my face in it. Dad, I love you, but you're kind of dumb sometimes. Dumb? Or clearly the superior dad? You know what? I don't have any, have any of the energy required to properly unpack your weird fixation with asserting your masculinity. I'm going to bed. Night. Amanda slides off the couch and face down onto the floor. I am a tired slug. Amanda, that floor is disgusting. I don't care. Well, night, honey. Night, pops. Date completed. How'd we do? I'm pretty sure we got an S. I feel like we nailed it. <laughs> what an amazing date. Yeah, it was. And we got an achievement. Soft boy. Well, all right then. Uh, I think that's a really good place to call it for today, guys. Uh, we're going to hop back in here next time, and I definitely want to go on another date with Brian. I like him. He's a cutie patootie. Uh, but yeah, if you guys still want me to go on a date with Matt or Craig or anything like that, let me know in the comments down below because I want your feedback. But I kind of like Brian. I kind of like Brian a lot. He's adorable. And his puppy is amazing. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the like button before you go if you enjoyed the video. It does help the channel grow. 
and uh, subscribe if you're new. Beardheart, bye!